Dancing World, yes, it is. If you go to, usually game store should have them. Oh, actually, no, Train Sim World is difficult, is more difficult to get in box, because game don't stock the box. There is a box, I've got one at work, but they're a little bit harder to get hold of. The UK market is generally moving towards Steam cards and things like that. Right, well, waiting to take the 0930 to Scarborough, the Class 45 book has developed a serious fault. Luckily, with some quick thinking, and a plan has formed. <clears throat> Class 08 was dispatched to draw the 45 off its train and allow your loco, which was waiting on standby for just such an eventuality, to replace it. And hopefully the passengers were none the wiser. Jade, huge well done for doing such a fantastic job of raising money for children in need. Thank you very much, Jade. <clears throat> Obey all signals as required. We're not expecting any problems in this journey, and it should be a clear run to Chester. Book departure times are... Yeah, you may recall this message. Good. And up now. Lights, camera, action. Oh, look at this North Wales Coast BR Blue. This is an Ed Fisk scenario. What did I say was the store name? But well, in the UK, a game. But anywhere that sells box games um, is likely to have it. I think it's mostly non-UK, I think, that's carrying the box. Because recorded messages are broken. How are they broken, Rob? Working fine. I've had a couple of people saying that they're broken, and I can't replicate how that they're broken. No, you have to use a special, a special function called Display Recorded Message, uh, Simply Transport. Yeah, there was someone else I was talking to, Rob, that was saying that they had problems with it, but it turned out to be a spelling mistake and or a typing error that apparently the previous that Tier 17 didn't mind, whereas Tier 18 is a bit more fussy about, which blows my mind because nothing's changed as far as I'm wearing any of that. Yes, it's it's done via Lua Simply Transport. I do cover it in my um, advanced scenario scripting tutorial, the Lua scripting bit, how you do pop-up messages, HTML messages, and recorded messages. Amazon, there you go. They've got it. Right. Yeah, I think Ed missed a trick. Not doing 47245. But then he may not have wanted to keep feeding into the hype. <clears throat> Bringing out hardware is a really, really tough thing to do. Um, Mold Junction. Kudos to uh, PI Engineering for, for doing it. It's, it's, a, it's an expensive and risky thing to do. Yeah, that was the failed peak. This is the Shap 47, yeah. WT, where are those PCB scenarios? What do you mean, where are they? 
And what do you mean by those? Stopping at Daganwi. Hey, Gauja. Yeah, we're doing well actually on the uh, on the raising so far. It's all dried up for a little while though, so good a time as any to just uh, remind everybody why we're really here. Dig deep. What key is on the woodhead for series parallel switching? Try E or Y or something like that. Yeah, I don't know what... Yeah, you, you're right, Rob. It should work. It's supposed to work. But it doesn't. As far as I can see. That's the gist I'm getting anyway. Oh, it's the B key, is it? Okay. I hooked up my... Um, I've got the Xbox 360 um, Kinect, and I hooked it up the other day to my PC to see whether or not I could sort of do a track AR replacement so I didn't have to deal with the cords. It actually doesn't work too badly but not, not well enough. And the Xbox 360 one has a minimum distance that's a lot, it's a bit too far out. So I have to sort of be sitting here for it to work properly, which is a bit too far away, really. Sitting here, it's clipped out and the depth sensor can't read you. And there's a wall just there, so I can't put it any further back. <laughs> Oh, you want to see me struggle? Oh, we've got PZB coming up next. 100 minutes of PZB from Jan Chidoba. No, actually, what you're seeing there wasn't the APT trackside simulation. It was the HST from Great Western. that particular video. It was one of those things that it wasn't intended to be there. We noticed it in the background and thought, and, thought, and it's too late to change it. And we thought, oh, well, you know what, wonder if anyone will notice. And no one did. No one ever noticed there was an HST in the background or someone's screen. Gouger, excellent cause to dig deep, everyone. Thank you very much, Gouger. Much appreciated. And Matthew Plays, thank you for the sub. Much appreciated. Appreciate your support. Until I mentioned it, yeah. And that was after Great Western, I think it was either out or was announced, so... At that point, there was nothing, there was no secret at that point. Yeah, I know, this... This is a bit... I don't quite know why, I think it's just a bit sad. Rob Yance, I missed your tear again. Oh, sorry. Uh, for the win... Um, 
And all others now join the rest of the stream. Yeah, nice one. Nice one. Thank you, Rob Janssen. You noticed the dev working on it when the video was released? Oh, nice track. So, well spotted. Just about nobody else did. Well, in fact, nobody else did. Certainly nobody mentioned it. So far, Rob, let me just reload the page. We're at $157 in bits at the moment. Oh, you had seen some posts in RSUG about it. Oh, okay, fair enough. I'm surprised no one mentioned it on the chat. Clan Dunno Junction. Calspec. Yes, all right, Matt, got to go now. Keep up the good work and be back later. All right, then, cheers, Calspec. Thank you for all of your hard work this morning. Really appreciate it. A chocolate orange cupcake and a packet of crisps. Oh, that sounds good. That does sound good. Gas can five, thank you for the sub, much appreciated. If you mean that one, that's a 105 from Brightly. Oh, that's a 107 there. Hi, uh, Remco. It's um, uh, Rob Powell, I think, that mentioned the uh, the issues like you've got. Maybe you can uh, shed some light on what what you found. Danny Leach, thank you very much for the donation. Much appreciated. Pushes us up to 1,200. 1,200 hype. Right, we've got a 25 limit. Colwyn Bay. Yeah, I think I actually linked to it a little while back, trackside simulation, because after we'd announced the HST and everyone knew it, I was like, oh. I'm surprised no one saw this, and everyone said, oh, I thought that was the APT. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not an APT. Well, but I can see how you would think that. Where am I in regards to the map? Top left. Northwest. 
so we we started there we've worked our way down to here we just left there and we're going all the way to Chester down there oh got an experimental train the research train is it oh no they're just um, govs But yeah, Rob and Renko, if you can let me know what the output is, because I'd like to understand what you found a bit better, so that I can at least forward it onto the team. Oh, the centipede uh, the, that Repo did is to treat, isn't it, Glen Agol? Did you have you got the use of the hang of the um, uh, of the full startup procedure for it? I did. That was. Uh, um, I remember when Ricardo showed me that because he was asking me, "Can I put animations in coaches?" I said, "Well, I don't see why you can't." He said, "All right, let me go and try something." And he came back a few days later. Hey, look, what I got working. What is this thing with the APT and the HST? It's a video, it was an early dev diary, Trackside Simulation mentioned it earlier on. Um, and um, in the back you can see people working and on one of the screens there's an artist called Tom on the left hand side and on his screen he's got actually, he's, he has actually working on the HST from Great Western. And this was a CSX Heavy Hall launch video or dev diary video. Five and a half hours. Uh, this scenario is called um, Salt to Swap by Ed Fisk. It's available on Steam Workshop. Um, they didn't, I think they did some work on the cab trackside simulation, but Tom modelled the exterior. He's the same artist that did the Javelin, the IC3 exterior, Tornado, Mallard, or the A4s. Very, very talented guy. He, he did the exterior for the GP38 as well, and the interior for the GP38. I'm trying to think, did he do the AC4400? I think he did the AC4400. GU2223, thank you for the sub, much appreciated. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, I don't know. We, we, we noticed that here earlier on, but 
Let me see if I can see what's wrong with it. Yeah, it's just a bit lopsided. Becoming floppier as the stream goes on. Just like me. Blech. Now I've got ear, ear beard. But ear duh. It's an undercover script engine update. Well, that's what I'm saying. As far as I'm aware, there was no such update. <laughs> so I'm slightly worried. <laughs> so if you guys can send me details about what, you, what you're perceiving has changed, I can go and find out if someone changed something and might have had other other impacts that they might not be expecting because there should have been no change to that sort of thing at all thank you Rob I think it doesn't help that Mm, it's nothing to do with that. Appreciate that, Rob. Appreciate that. Hey, Acme Chief. Abigail and Penzan, 5.6 miles. So Tom is basically the go-to man for loco creation. Well, no, he's I mean, he's the uh, he's the rail vehicle team lead. I mean, he's um, but we have other people that make rail vehicles. But he was the um, the first rail vehicle creator on TS World. Leads the team that make them now. So, but he's got two other people that work for him, who um, who also do a very good job as well. It's just that because he was the first one, he's got a lot of the early, uh, all the early stuff is credited to him. I think he did the power car, I think. Um, somebody else did the coaches, exteriors. I think Skyhook did the interiors. Dan, no, Mike Whiteley used to work for Dovetail. He did the SD40-2 in Strange Sim World. Um, but uh, he works at... Um, Another games company now. I believe you've been watching this for five and a half hours. <clears throat> Why? Yeah, as long as there's no AWS, then I can stand. I can stay outside the cab. Yes, he works on Battlefront 2. Well, that's what his current project is, I think. Oh, and now you're saying just watch the exclamation mark. Oh, okay. Thing is, I'm looking at chat as well. You bought a Flight Sim Mode, Acme Chief? Yeah, Flight Sim Mode is really, really good. 
The guys deserve a lot of praise for that. It's still got, um, you know, plenty of opportunity for it to grow in the future, but it's some really, they have, you know, with the new skies and so forth, they've really brought the whole thing forward quite a long way. Transport guide, my angel language, even with abbreviations. Would you say Flight Sim World is good if you're new to Flight Sim? Definitely, because the all of the PPL of training, the, light, the LAPL and PPL training and so forth is a really good way of um, of getting the basics down. And because there are no jets, you're just you're not you know you're not thinking, oh, I want to get into a 747, which is just not the sort of thing you do when you're first learning to fly. <clears throat> it's a really good sort of place to learn the uh, learn some solid basics. Because making a 737 is a massive job, trackside simulations. Absolutely massive job. And being completely honest with themselves, the teams don't have the skill and the expertise yet to do it. They're just trying to get into flight sims. Now, they could have just modelled a 737 and thrown it in the game, and everyone would have hated them for it. Um, but they couldn't do that. The team, we don't have the relations, or didn't have the relationships with the flight company, with the aircraft manufacturers, do now. So they, they'll have much more chance of getting access to these things uh, and getting much more detailed stuff. Whereas the light aircraft, you can very easily, anyone can go down to a uh, um, an airfield, have a ta taster session and learn how to do them. And we've also got, I think, three or four people on the team that are doing their private pilot's license. So a lot of enthusiasm for flying in the team. So and I guess there's also are all the getting a grounding of all of the runways, getting all of the um, uh, get, getting all the navigation system in and so forth, getting all that in and working, and then you build the jet lanes and all the other sort of, because it's not just about the 737, it's about the everything related to a 737, isn't it? It's about where where does it fly to, what supporting services does it have, how does the air traffic control work, how do the jetways work, and making sure that everything is in there correctly, not just putting a 3D model of a 737 in. I mean, this is all just me talking, just to be clear, I'm not on the flight team. <laughs> I'm on the train team. Thank you, Remco. Can you reply to that support ticket as well, Remco, and just let them know, and then they can add it to the support database. Superb, thank you Remco. 